This cheat is going to look at the coefficient of determination, which is represented by a little r squared. In the last tutorial, we looked at r values and how these talked about the relationship of a scatter plot, the independent variable to the dependent variable. So how well this one, the independent down here, relates to the dependent going up here. How much they correlate to one another, what the relationship's like. That gave us an R value. And if the R value fell somewhere in this scale, always has to be between negative 1 and positive 1. So if we got something 0.75 to 0.99, we called that a strong relationship in the positive direction. Something between 0.5 and 0.74, we would say a moderate relationship in the positive direction, and so on. So go back and have a look at that tute on R values, because that's quite important for this next step. Because to work out the coefficient of determination, coefficient of determination, you have an R value. Coefficient of determination is R squared, so we just square whatever we're given. So if you're given 0.84 as an R value, you just square it and you get 0.7056 and that's your R squared. If you're given an R value of negative 0.5, you square that and you get R squared equals positive 0.25 because remember two negatives times together makes a positive. So anything that's negative when it's squared is positive. So because R can only be between negative 1 and positive 1 and when we square one of the negatives that'll become positive and if we square one of the positives that'll stay positive we're only going to get positive answers for r squared and it's always going to fall between 0 and positive 1 because we had these decimals between 0 and 1 for these and now we've just made them both positive. So your r squared value, your coefficient of determination, will always be between 0 and 1. What the r squared value tells us is the proportion of the variation in the dependent variable that can be explained by the variation in the independent variable. So note I didn't say how much one causes the other, but rather just how much the variation in one is explained by the variation in the other. Now what does that mean? Well, say you have these two variables, age and salary. And we've determined through some statistical analysis that these two have a relationship to one another. We think that someone's salary has a bit of a dependence on their age, in that if we know how old someone is, we might be able to predict with some level of certainty what their salary is. But this relationship isn't entirely explained one by the other. For example, some of the factors in what your salary might be are what your job actually is. If you work as a cashier at Macca's, you're probably less likely to have the kind of salary that the CEO of Microsoft has, for example. So your actual job, um, your level of education might have an effect, the industry that you're in, could affect it. Whether you work part-time or full-time could affect it. There are all sorts of elements that could make up what your salary could be. So we could compare salary to the type of job, we could compare salary to level of education, we could compare salary to industry, but in this example we're comparing salary to age. So if we've got someone who's, you know, 40, their salary is blah. We've got someone who's 35, their salary is blah, etc. What we're trying to work out with this coefficient of determination is how much of an effect does their age have on their salary? Is it mostly to do with their age or is it mostly to do with, you know, one of these other factors? So if we get an R square, squared value of 0 0.36, for example, what we're saying is 36% of the variation in someone's salary depends on their age. And the rest of it, the other 64% that makes up, 
you know, the rest of the 100 is due to something else. It's due to one of these other factors. But we can say with some assurity that 36% of that variation is due to this factor. So in the example of blood alcohol level versus reaction time, first of all, which is dependent and which is independent? Is your blood alcohol dependent on your reaction time or is your reaction time dependent on your blood alcohol? It's more likely to be that way. So this is going to be the dependent variable and this is going to be the independent variable. So if we get an R squared value of 0.65 for example, what we're saying is 65% of the variation in your reaction time can be explained by the variation in your blood alcohol level. So if you're asked to interpret an R squared value on an exam, what you would say is blah 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 percent of the variation in and then insert your dependent variable can be explained by the variation in and then chuck your independent variable in the sentence there. So for example, if your variables are height and weight with weight being dependent upon height, you would say blah 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 percent of the variation in weight can be explained by the variation in height. If your variables are number of hours studying for an exam and the exam result, you would expect that the result would be dependent upon the amount of time you study. So you would say blah 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 percent of the variation in the exam score can be explained by the variation in the time studying. Something to watch out for. Be wary of using the word cause or causes, as in one variable causes the other, because this will get you into all kinds of hot water. In fact, I would steer clear of it altogether. When we're looking at the relationship between two variables and discovering that there is some sort of association between them, that doesn't mean that one necessarily causes the other. An example that one of the textbooks gives that I think explains this really well is they talk about height and the number of marks you get in footy, right? So we find some association that says the taller players tend to take a lot more marks in footy than the shorter players do. So we get this positive association saying that the taller someone is, the taller a footy player is, the more likely they are to take more marks. But that doesn't mean that their height causes them to be good at taking marks in football. Because there are a lot of other things, of course, that come into play. I mean, it's their level of skill. It's how fit they are. It's whether the kick was any good. It's, you know, in what way they were assisted by the other teammates leading into that play. So your height, being tall, doesn't cause you to be good at football. Otherwise, everyone would be good at taking marks, right? So you wouldn't want to take an R value of, say, an R squared value of, say, 0.65 and say 65% of the variation in the amount of marks someone takes is caused by their height because that will just, gee, that's all kinds of wrong. I would just steer clear of that word altogether in an exam. There's an association. One can help explain the other, but it doesn't cause it directly. So how do we find R squared? Well, the same way you find the R value, you put the data values into the list of your calculator, you ask it for linreg A X plus B, and then you are given an R value and an R squared value. If you are given an R value and asked to work out what the R squared value is, well, that's pretty simple. You just square it. So you would type 0.2 squared into your calculator. Notice that when you square a negative, so this one started negative and it became positive. This one started negative and it became positive. Squaring a negative makes it positive. But some of the calculators, I know the TI-83s do it and I think the TI-Inspire CAS's do it. If you use that little X to the power of 2 button that's on the front of the calculator, if you type in negative 0.78 squared using that button, it'll say negative 0.61. I don't know why. The calculators just don't understand it for some reason. If you type negative 0.8 times negative 0.8, it'll understand and it'll give you a positive answer. But it's just something to watch out for. You need to know in your mind that two negatives make a positive because every now and again, particularly with this function, the calculator gets it wrong. Just something to be aware of. 
And finally, what about going in the other direction? Here's a scatter plot that has an R squared value of 0 0.3361. And say you've been given this in the question and asked what Pearson's product moment correlation coefficient is, given that you know this R value. So we know R squared, we're trying to find R. So what we're going to do is the square root of 0 0.3361. It's the inverse of this squaring operation. But when you do a square root, you could get the positive or negative square root of something. So we get two possible R values. You put this in your calculator to find what the square root is, and you get an answer of 0 0.5797, but that could be positive or negative. So if we need to figure out which answer it is. Is it the positive R value or is it the negative R value? So for that, you look at your scatter plot and you say, is this going in a positive direction or a negative direction? This one's going down the hill, so we know we need the negative of these two. So R is going to be negative 0 0.5797. Let's do one more of those. Here's a scatter plot that has a coefficient of determination of 0 0.4119. What is the product moment correlation coefficient to two decimal places? So how do you work it out? We say, OK, to work out R, we're going to undo this. We're going to inverse this squared function. So we want the positive or negative square root of 0 0.4199, which we put in our calculator and we get to two decimal places, positive or negative, 0 0.65. Now, is it going to be the positive one or the negative one? Which way does the graph go? It's going in a positive direction. So R is positive 0 0.65.